Whenever I cook frozen dumplings, it always turn into an ugly noodle and meatball soup. So I scoured across the motherland of dumplings, Chinese social media, and found a couple viral recipes that will transform this convenience food. First things first, I'm the realist. Second of all, we gotta apply the correct method to the correct type of frozen dumplings. Even if you can't read, you can tell by the pictures. Like this one looks to be boiled or steamed. On the other hand, this one's clearly pan fried. You can't pan fry a steamed dumpling, but um... You can steam a pan fried dumpling. The biggest difference between your grandma's dumplings and store bought ones are the craftsmanship. As you can see, a lot of imperfections here. Sometimes they're not even sealed properly, which make them very fragile. To minimize damage, we have to be really gentle to them. So we're gonna start with cold water with a little salt. This gives them time to come up to temp and heat more evenly. The key is to never let it boil. Whenever you see bubbles like this, put in some cold water. This minimizes the movement in the pan and keep it at a constant temperature. By the third time you have to do that, your dumpling Dumplings are done. Look, nothing's breaking. Nice job, team. So here comes our first recipe, sort of like a wonton soup. So to a teaspoon of better than bouillon, we're mixing some of the dumpling water to create our high quality homemade chicken stock. To season it, a spoonful of soy sauce, black vinegar, and sesame oil. Put in your dumplings, add in however much broth you like. Sauces are gonna dissipate naturally. Finally, garnish it with some scallion. Here it is, our simple wonton soup made with frozen dumplings. The ingredients might come from the freezer, but it's burning with the love of life. <clears throat> Let's give it a taste and rate it 1 through 10. The chicken bouillon and the seasoning goes a long way. It tastes so legit, I'm starting to think that my local Chinese restaurant uses the same exact recipe to charge me $12 for it. Overall, it's very comforting, simple, great for the winter. 8.8 .8 out of 10. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that I'm obsessed with chili oil. This recipe is like a reminder that it goes well with everything. Starting with 2 tablespoons of chili powder, some garlic, cilantro, scallion, black vinegar, and soy sauce. You can add some sugar if you want, but I'm gonna skip it. Now heat up some oil off camera to about 370. Put in boiled dumplings, toss it together, and that's it. So in the original video, they also added some broth and rice wine vinegar to turn it into a hot and sour soup. But we're just gonna eat it like this. Yeah. Not much description needed. Very aromatic, savory, acidic. Hits all the spot. 9 out of 10. Highly recommend. First of all, check out my new bowl. You like it? I'm in love with it. This recipe, we're using my favorite nut butter, tahini. I guess sesame is more of a seed. Well, peanuts are legumes, so bite me. With pure sesame paste like this, we're gonna turn it into a sauce by adding water. And the more water you add, the more pale it's gonna look. And then you guessed it, soy sauce and black vinegar. Spoiler alert, it's not getting old anytime soon. Season with salt if you need and mix everything together. Also some pickled radish for acidity and texture. You don't have to add it if you don't have any. Now into the sauce, we'll toss in our dumplings. Mine looks a little too liquidy, so make sure you add less water in the beginning. Finally, give it some cilantro and scallion treatment, and that's it. Dumplings in hot sesame sauce. Let's give it a taste and rate it 1 through 10. Obviously, it tastes good because the sauce is amazing, but it's nothing compared to sesame noodles. You can probably achieve the same effect with some peanut butter and chili oil. So for this one, I'm gonna have to give it a 7 out of 10. The danger of a sprouting potato has never been a threat to me. If you're craving Japanese curry but don't feel like making one, this recipe is for you. We'll first cut some potato cubes and take out a piece of the curry paste. Once the potatoes are fork tender, we'll drop in the dumplings and it's done. If you're using frozen dumplings, just let it simmer on low for 6 minutes. The potato starch and the curry paste itself is gonna thicken the broth a little bit. I feel like dumplings and curry are both comfort foods. Makes sense that they work well together. This is our last recipe for boiled slash steamed dumplings. We're gonna get to the pan frying very soon. Right now I'm gonna have a hard time tasting through the rest of the video. But this is my least favorite so far, not because it burnt me, maybe a little bit. Mostly because it's not a curry nor a dumpling soup, somewhere in between. But I like extreme, so 6 out of 10. 
This one's a classic pan fried dumpling with a snowflake bottom. And we're switching to the one made for frying. It's pretty simple, you just gotta get the timing and the ratio right. First, a little bit of oil in, yes, my brand new non-stick pan. I think the gray one I've been using is a setup, so I'm gonna avoid it for now. Drop the frozen dumplings directly into the pan and arrange them nicely. Why does it look a little off? We'll let them sear on medium low for about 2 to 3 minutes until the bottom is golden brown like this. Now here's the important part. To create the snowflake, we're going to use a flour and water mixture. The ratio I use is 1 tablespoon of flour to 10 tablespoon of water. So 10 to 1 ratio works the best. After we pour it in, we'll put on a lid that doesn't fit and let it steam for 5 minutes. Once the dumplings sort of cook through, we'll let the flour mixture reduce until it's crispy. Once it's sliding easily, like me into Gordon's DMs, it's ready. Maybe I shouldn't have done the flip over here, but look how beautiful. Now we'll rain some scallion and black sesame seeds. This is my first time making this dish. I'm surprised that it's still together. Sorry if the exhaust fan is annoying you because the smoke we made earlier is still going. Now let's give it a taste and rate it 1 through 10. The structural integrity of the dumplings resisted the drop of the ligma fork. Combined with great taste and crispy texture, I'm going to have to give it a 9.5 out of 10. If you think this is deja vu, uh, it, it's not. We're making another pan fried dumplings, but instead of water and flour, we're using cheese. But not just any cheese, my never ending raclette. You guys seem to think that I think raclette goes well with everything, but that's not true. I know it goes well with everything. After you add however much cheese you want, put in a little bit of water and steam as before. It seems like this pan distributes heat pretty unevenly. Like this part is much hotter than this part. So we'll just rotate it to get it even. Once it's all brown and sliding easily, we'll flip it out. Let's do it over a piece of dirty rug so it doesn't make smoke. Check out this beauty. Kinda looks like the sun. Let's give it a quick sound check. It's quite literally one of the best things I've ever made on this channel. When the cheese gets crispy like that, it kind of ditches its dairy nature and goes straight into flavor crisps. It works really well with dumplings. Well, if you put this on the bottom of a shoe, I'll still eat it. 9.6 out of 10. And let's get a breakfast dish in here, starting with the same exact steps as the previous two. Instead of water, flour, and cheese, we're going to pour in two eggs whisked up. It might mess up the arrangement, so I'll fix it before it's too late. And is this what it's like to use a real non-stick pan? It should be ready in about 5 minutes or so. Eggs cook really fast. It kind of looks like the face or the eggs of an alien. I think in the beginning, the heat was a little too high, so the bottoms of the dumplings got a little burnt. Good thing I covered it up with the chili oil. This looks kind of cute. Like a spaceship. It's not breakfast time right now, but let's give it a taste and rate it 1 through 10. I'm having this for breakfast tomorrow for sure. Dumplings are pretty good as usual, but the eggs are pan fried on the bottom till crispy and steamed on top till fluffy. And with the chili oil, everything together is pretty amazing. Not as good as the cheese one though, so I'll give it an 8.8 .8 out of 10. This one seems a little experimental, kind of takes me back to last week when we made the handmade pasta. Because we're sort of making a marinara sauce, start by sauteing some garlic and put in our tomato puree. We'll let it reduce a little bit and season with white pepper, salt, and some onion powder. When it's nice and thick and making big bubbles, we'll pour in about a little less than a quarter of a cup of heavy cream. Mixing color is kind of fun. Should I start an art channel, podcast? or a commentary channel. Let me know in the comments. When mixed thoroughly, we'll put in cooked dumplings. I'm using the earlier ones because I don't waste food. We don't have to simmer the dumplings in the sauce. We're just trying to heat it up and make sure you cover it with the sauce as well. 
I thought it was a one-way ticket to Italy, but I guess all the spices kind of took us to India instead, which I'm not complaining. The gravy tastes just like butter chicken, except it covers dumplings. I might be wrong, but I think there's a dish just like this in India. If you're familiar with the cuisine, let me know in the comments. Overall, very round mouthfeel and balanced flavors. 8.3 out of 10. Moving on to these two ingredients. This is sort of like the recipe to use up any meat you have in the fridge. I'm using bacon. bacon. But you can use leftover steak, sausage, chicken, whatever you want. What's wrong with my bacon? It's probably the easiest recipe we have. Everything's properly seasoned. I learned from TikTok that you always add water to bacon to most efficiently render out fat. Also minimize splatters. We don't have to get it too crispy. As long as it has some colors, we can add in the kimchi. Toss everything together to combine the flavor. Once the color of the bacon changes to red, we will be dumpling in the dumplings. And that's basically it. No need for additional seasoning because the dumplings, kimchi, and bacon are complete entities on their own. That's why when put together, they transform into something even better just like a healthy relationship. So let's give it a taste and rate it on 13. I'm about to show emotion, so I apologize in advance. I don't think the combination of bacon and kimchi has ever failed me ever. You can add an egg and fry up some rice, or you can just put chicken breast in it and call it a health meal. I thoroughly enjoyed it and it's fairly easy. I'll give it a nine out of 10. To create the red sauce, we need ketchup, gochujang, and spicy bean paste. If the kimchi one is versatile in terms of meat, this one is mostly for vegetables. First step is the sauce. We're gonna saute some garlic, and then in goes the spicy bean paste, gochujang, and ketchup. These three sauces are not only all red, but also sweet, spicy, acidic, and savory. Hits all the spots. Once they're mixed and heated through, we'll put in our vegetables. Cabbage works the best, but unfortunately I only have its slightly inferior cousin, Brussels sprouts. Toss to cook it for a few minutes, toss in the dumplings, and toss some more. We're done. It doesn't look that good. As our last dish of the day, I'm not going to judge it till I taste it. I'm only reacting like this because vegetable tastes like set. But I think anything will taste decent coated in that sauce. So if you have a healthy lifestyle or you have vegetables you want to get rid of, use this recipe. But today I'm only going to give it a 5 out of 10. So our frozen dumpling episode is a wrap. <laughs> Hopefully you try out some of these recipes because most of them are amazing. If you are a master of all languages like me, you should go support the Chinese chef that created these recipes. I'll link his video in the description. Alright, thank you. See you.